Good day everybody, I'm Benjamin Lupton and this talk is DocPad's ecosystem. Now I originally presented this talk on Wednesday, when was it? The 25th of September, however I actually forgot to record it and I presented it at SydneyJS which is the local JavaScript meetup for myself because I live in Sydney. Now a little bit back, a little bit of background about me, um, I created a company called Beverly. Uh, we're now pretty much entirely an open company. We try as much as we can to do that. And we're always going to improve on that. So what is an open company? It's, it's just a place where we make everything as open source and free as possible. So since July, we've actually been fully funded um, entirely by donations, allowing us to always work on our open source solutions. Now, what are our creations? Our creations, um, most popular one has been HistoryJS. That's gone on to become one of the top 40 JavaScript projects in the entire world. And more recently is Docpad, and that's where I put pretty much the last three years of my life into. And that's the topic of today's talk. And just a little quick thing about Startup for Sale. This is an idea about having like-minded people, like-minded uh, startup people, or developers, designers, business people, whatever, as long as they're interested in startups, actually co-working, co-living together in generally third world countries. So you can keep your costs down real low and have a really long time at that. So great lifestyle, costs down low, um, or at least less than what it would be in most first world countries. So that's really quite exciting. And for this presentation, this is where it is. So you can view the slides, add your comments, and eventually there will also be a place where you can rate this as well. So let's get started. Why is Docpad so interesting? Now, I actually thought about this a lot this last week, and I actually ended up coming up with, it's about the experience, and the experiences that Docpad allows. For developers, developers absolutely love Docpad. If we check out on the website, we have this little Twitter thing at the bottom, and every single day now, people are posting how much they actually enjoy Docpad and how they're using Docpad as well. So it's gone from three years where nobody used it when I was just crazy to now actually having people every single day saying how much they actually love Docpad. So that's really cool. Now. That's because we feel we've we've done really well in the developer experience. But why it's so interesting is we're also tackling client experiences, and eventually we'll also tackle end user experiences. So, we I'll talk about a reason why we feel we're doing those things and why we feel we're doing those things well. So, for the insights on why we feel we've been able to hit those things is there's two. There's one which is there's been experience lock-in with the way traditional CMSs have worked. And they are also generally monolithic things that allow for little reuse with other people in the community. And I'll talk about these things in more detail right now. So pretty much, um, if we look at the way Let's take WordPress. If I, as a developer, want to go about creating a blog, let's go back three years ago when static site generators were just becoming more mainstream then, um, with the advent of Jekyll and with the advent of things like Docpad and the other ones out then. So let's go back. I'm a developer. I want to set up a blog. I'll pick WordPress. Now, WordPress is this monolithic um, blogging engine that provides one experience for everybody, right? If I go about using it, I'm getting the same experience as a small business person would be getting. Or, and I'm getting the same experience as, like, say, my mum would be getting or my dad would be getting or whatever. And we're not the same people. We have different needs. We have different things that excite us or different things that interest us. We also have different experiences. For myself, I love the ability to be able to apply abstractions. I, I feel that I know what is best for particular situations, and I like to be able to exercise that freedom in applying the abstractions that I feel is best. And that's something which I feel with Docpad, we're very abstraction friendly. I'll go into that in a bit. So there's this part of we're getting experience lock-in. So it's treating everybody as if it's the same. Now, the approach we're taking um, 
with dog pad is we're actually doing it in a decoupled way. I'll go more into the technical details, but for now what we need to understand is with WordPress, you have this content creation experience that everybody is having and this developer experience, which is also forced in this content creation. And if I want to use WordPress uh, and I say my client really likes the interface, they can't, I can't just take that interface and use it with something else, right? Or use that interface with some other backend, right? I have to install the entire WordPress system. Now, and the same goes for the development. If I love the development experience of, say, Drupal, right, I can't just go apply different, um, or let's say I love the development experience of WordPress, then I can't just, and I hate the client experience, I hate the content creation experience, I can't just use the development experience and get away with that um, client experience, the content creation experience. So we figured out we could actually do a decoupled way so you have the content creation experience decoupled from the backend. So the client ends up happiest and the backend developer ends up happiest. And I'll talk about that in a bit more. Now the other insight we had is this monolithic library. Often if we go with using WordPress, Rails, Drupal, things like that, you can also feel kind of as if we're in a big jungle and we have to use a machete to get out of certain things to get out of certain conventions or break away and do what we feel is best. Now, if we keep doing those things, if we keep using this machete, eventually it, it generally comes to a time where we feel we're using a Jenga tower, right? And we're finally removing that last brick and that tower falls over and we realize, oh crap, maybe I this wasn't the right system for me. So then we embark on another six month or a year journey learning another system just like it and we have the same experience. Now Docker is built um, in quite a modular way so everything's abstracted in plugins and we try and make even core parts like our watching library available for other people and that's one of our most popular offshoots is the actual watching a lot of other projects use that so we're trying to encourage as much reuse of the code base um, and as much power to people so building a website is more like using a Lego and it's more a collaborative experience as well. People can help each other and we can use each other's work. But I'll talk about the Lego thing a bit more when we get into why Docpad is abstraction friendly. So these were the two insights. Experience lock-ins and that always creates a never ideal combination because not everybody is the same. We have different needs and locking us into a particular experience isn't the way to go. We should always be able to use the best experience possible um, for us for our particular situations and our personal requirements and this little reuse we're always recreating effort um, with those traditional type systems when really we should be as modular as possible and we should make building websites like Lego where we can add on things as we need to and we can do the abstractions we need to now why should you believe me on those two insights well you should probably believe me because of the popularity Docpad's been able to achieve in the past three years. We now have 500 daily users and if you think about that in terms of 500 random people on the internet it's not that big but if we think about that in terms of let's say the average dev shop of maybe 50 people so and we have 10 of them so 10 dev shops 50 people each are working on building Docpad websites for clients that's actually a big number and a significant number and if you can imagine the output such a thing would have then that's really cool because they would be really engaged they'll be always pushing out new amazing things they would have plenty of people on board um, and lots of innovation happening and that's exactly what the community actually feels like it really feels as if there is 500 people constantly participating and we're getting better all the time we now have 110 plugins um, I'm probably more than that in the published NPM and we use NPM for managing our plugin infrastructure um, or publishing our packages to NPM or to a registry and that's really cool so that's 110 things people wanted to do they wanted to build something with this Lego paradigm and then made it available to other people so they didn't have to build it themselves and it's really cool what people are building so we are actually I'll cover that right now so if we go to the plugins we have 
There's generally four categories of plugins. There's renderers. They render new extensions to different things. So for instance, um, Jade to anything, so Jade to HTML. Um, another popular one's Echo, which is a templating engine, kind of like ERB. Um, we have Coffee Cup, which is CoffeeScript for HTML, so it kind of renders to HTML, or XML, or whatever you want. And we have like CoffeeScript to JavaScript, but we have a whole bunch. These are just the ones that we've vetted and we've decided these are great. We have a whole bunch more actually published to the NPM registry that we haven't yet reviewed so far. Now we have helpers. These add new types of functionality to Docpad. For instance, pull in Facebook contents, make your URLs or your blog posts look like that. Um, do clean URLs or URLs without extensions. So it's really quite cool. The services one I really like. It's pulling in the the you know tweet this or start this stuff onto your website without you always having to do that yourself. It's it's really quite nice. Um, and we have really powerful ones like native comments support. So instead of using a different comments provider, you can actually use native comments, which is a kind of cool proof of concept. But you probably don't want to use that. Well, you may. Um, I would probably just use Discus because I like Discus or Discuss. We have deployers. These deploy Docpad to other um, services, so GitHub pages, um, Sunny deploys to AWS, Google Storage. It's really quite cool. And we have um, admin interfaces. So these add-on are the interfaces. I'll talk about that in the client experience section. So it's really quite cool. And now if we get back to the slides, we also have 50 contributors um, always working. It's not just myself. Um, I kind of, my role is kind of to lead the community, but more build the best team to maintain Docpad and maintain all of this as an open ecosystem. So if I go away, the community will still thrive. And, I, and we've got 50 contributors that have contributed to everything. We've got 10 on the extras team that help maintain all the official plugins. And we have um, myself and Chase Coleman actually maintaining the core, and we hope to bring on more other people. Um, Chase is an amazing man. He, he's very smart and very talented in ways I, I couldn't be myself. So as a recap, 500 daily users, it really feels as if we have that much. There's always new stuff going. Everyone's really participating, participating on the, um, the issue track. We have 110 plus plugins, and we got over 50 contributors, and people love it. They really do. Now, we're also a sustainable community. We've been funded um, since July to be able to work on this full time, but the impact we have with the people is really cool. We're used by really big projects, for instance, Adobe Top Code, um, Emmet IO, which is for me, Zen Coding uses us, Microsoft uses us for the co op project, and um, more recently, um, Semantic UI, which is a CSS framework with 2,000 plus watches on GitHub as well, is using us for their documentation website. So it's really cool to see us being used for big profile project websites um, and for rendering documentation. Documentation is something which the extraction friendliness of Docpad really helps come into place. Now, we also are used by teams, so dev shops using us to make us available for clients and using us for creating websites for businesses or things like that. Now, we're also used as a compilation process, for instance, the Project JS2 Coffee, the Project Query Engine, actually compiled using Docpad rather than Grunt, things like that, because of certain features that we allow. We won't go into that in that talk, but it's definitely something pretty cool. And we're finally just used for individuals like myself doing up personal websites or just little websites for different projects. Now, because of this, because we got dev shops on board, we actually, and the, the success with the ecosystem so far, we're actually having business interest and we're actually having partners um, jump on board as well. So we have dev shops saying, actually, I want to help out and I want to provide support um, and development services for businesses that are interested. So generally the workflow that happens is a business will email Beverly, say, hey, we've got this idea for a website, can we actually do this in Docpad? I'll give them a little workflow. And then I'll forward them on to a partner, a dev shop experienced and trained in Docpad that could best attain to their needs. So it's really quite cool that we've got interest in here and actually money, fl money flowing through the ecosystem. 
And as I said, we've been uh, personally myself um, and Beverly have been sponsored by My Planet Digital, one of the partners, to work on this making DocPad the best experience for clients as possible. So it's really quite cool. So I talked about why we've got the great developer experience and probably the best way to showcase this will be by running through this quick experience demo. So this is a little video um, submitted by someone on just in the DocPad community and he's just gone and he's created this directory called DocP. And he's put in terminal, he's already got DocPad installed, so right now he's just installing DocPad. Well, actually, no, he's already got DocPad installed, but he's running DocPad run. So DocPad run's figured out that it's an empty directory, and it's fetched the, the latest skeletons in the exchange. So we have a bunch of skeletons created by the community allowing you to get started um, real quick with an existing work. And he's gone and he's chose Twitter Bootstrap with Jay to use on this new project. So it's cloning out this git repository of that skeleton and now it's installing all the plugins. So I talked before about Docpad's very modular um, and whatever doesn't need to go in the core can go into plugins. So it's installing all the plugins that we're using and once that's done it'll start up the web server and start watching the files for changes. Now you just open up a style file in the actual documents directory and what's going to happen is that this file has the .css.style extension. So what this means is render from stylus to CSS. Stylus is a CSS preprocessor made by TJ Holloway Chow. Um, and Docpad uses, it's very similar to the Rails asset pipeline way. So we just install the plugin we need to use um, and then it allows us to render from that to something else. And because we are explicit about this, we can combine extensions. So if we want to have some dynamic markdown, we can actually do .html .markdown .echo, and we have the markdown plugin installed, and we have the echo plugin installed, and that will allow us to do like four loops in our markdown, or include dynamic data into our markdown file, which is really quite cool. So we've seen that now Docpad started up, and he's going to just get the web server, and you can see already. Um, in a minute, we've got a new DocPad website running Twitter Bootstrap and running Jade. So right now, it's going to open up the index.html.jade file, which is what we're viewing right there on the left-hand side. And it's just going to change the column down the bottom, that DocPad column, to make it a little bit wider rather than 50%. Right Now what he's going to do, so he's using the Jade preprocess or templating engine here. Um, which is one of the many templating engines we support. Now what he's doing now is he's just going to add a new column. So it's really... Actually I'll take some water. Now as you can see right now he saved it and the website refreshes automatically. That's because we actually have another plugin called Live Reload to actually automatically reload things as we make changes. Now, right now he's going to do some add a new post and we can see we've got a post listing there. Now what's really cool about Docpad is it actually passes everything into an in-memory database and actually exposes us to do NoSQL type queries onto that database using templating engines. So this listing of posts is actually created by just doing a NoSQL query and then cycling through the post and match that query, so matching everything inside the post directory and displaying them. So it's also, also automatically detected he's created this new file and it's just going away and it's... Um, sorry, so it's automatically detected he's created that file and it's it re-rendered the post page for us automatically. Now, it's pretty interesting why it was able to figure that out because we're just edit, editing this post directory, right? Now, Docpad keeps track of when a document references other files. So if we edit a file and uh, there's another document that references it, we also re-render the document that references it. That's why we know that we need to re-render the post page, but we don't necessarily have to re-render the welcome page. So we're really efficient with our rendering in that regard. Now, we can always get more efficient, but it's a lot better than pretty much everything else I've seen. So, now... As he also saved this, 
um, we see that when we save this it also updates the title and everything in the post page automatically I just explained how it does that and when it clicks it it just renders with markdown because we've got the markdown plugin installed so that's what the docpad experience is actually like it's it's like something where we just add the pieces that we need and it works in this very abstraction friendly way we can add whatever it is we need when we need it and if we are wanting to do something out of the box we support that we support you to be able to build your website like you're building Lego if you want to build a tower with a spaceship on top you can clone that and can make you know five different spaceships by installing a templating engine and doing a for loop right so that's that's the experience now we also have dynamic abilities and we're not just limited to static site generation right here everything gets generated to an out directory but we have this live reload and that's a dynamic thing now if we go to my website we'll also see examples of dynamic stuff happening so we're putting in my latest github activity we're putting in my youtube videos my vimeo videos we're building pulling in a bunch of statistics from different services that I use all over the web right and if I click on projects we'll also see a whole bunch of listing of all my different projects around the web now this is a bit weird for a static website because aren't static websites meant to never really change well not necessarily static just means that the contents rendered kind of once and then it's served multiple times so it's very very efficient so what we do here on my particular website is we just tell it to regenerate about every day. So every day it'll go away and it'll fetch its latest data from different sources and just re-render the website, providing the illusion that it's a dynamic website when really it's just a static website, so you're getting all this benefit from that. Now, let's take the dock pad. I was doing some testing earlier, but it's back up and running. So let's take the dock pad website and if we go into this, um, there's a whole bunch of dynamic things going on. So our documentation is actually its own docpad, our uh, its own repository. So it's just a GitHub repository with a bunch of markdown files. And what the docpad website actually does is it pulls it in um, by a git clone and upon generation and each generation, um, each fresh regeneration, so every hour I think it, I have it set to, we actually update the, the documentation. Now we've also got an ability where we've extended the docpad server to add different types of routes and we have actually a route there so if someone submits a pull request or edits this repository, GitHub will send a post hook to a docpad.org URL um, we'll say okay is the token matching, it is, so let's regenerate the website using the docpad API. So that way when people edit the documentation we re-render the docpad website in real time. So it's really quite cool. So we can extend the docpad server, we can um, use the docpad API, we can pull in data from external services, we can do a lot of dynamic stuff because we're also powered by a Node.js web server. Now if you don't want any of those dynamic abilities, you can also just generate a static website and then deploy to like Apache um, or Nginx or whatever it is you want, right? You don't have to do dynamic websites. You can also go that static route. But the dynamic stuff is really cool because it allows Docpad to grow with you and it helps accomplish this abstraction friendliness. So I, I think I've covered the abstraction friendliness pretty well. We've, we've got this great development experience. It, building websites is like Lego. You install plugins, whatever doesn't need to go in the core it becomes a plugin. Um, you you start off, yeah, that's pretty it, pretty much it. And it, it's also got that dynamic ability, so it'll grow with you. And finally, when you open open ecosystem, we've got plenty of users which I already explained, and people will be able to help you out if you ever have problem. We have an IRC channel, we have GitHub issues, we have a Stack Overflow tag that you can use to get help with Docpad. We're looking at a mailing list as well. So we have plenty of ways for you to get support and, and people do get the support they need. So I talked about great client experiences, which has been our focus pretty much for this year. We started with just developers. Developers love us. But how can we get clients to love us as well, right? How can we get that dev shop loving Docpad to be able to help clients get on board? So we got a few ways to do that. And we have a few concepts um, here. 
that's the old so let's refresh it so there we go so we have a few concepts the the first concept is we pull in data um, is called importers so what importers allow us to do is they allow us to use existing services um, to create our content and then we pull it into Docpad and render it and facilitate our development. So if you have a client that likes to use um, WordPress, for instance, then we can pull in their WordPress data into your Docpad website. So you get to utilize Docpad for rent, you know, creating an amazing website or and rendering their WordPress content and they get to use WordPress for writing their content. And this is fantastic for blogging as well. So an example of this is we've we've got a few plugins. We've got downloaded that pulls in resources from um, different URLs. We have repo cloner that'll clone out repos. That's what the Docpad website uses to pull in the GitHub documentation for Docpad. And we've got this Tumblr importer as well, and we, we're working on a whole bunch more like once for Dropbox. But let's see the Tumblr importer. This is a skeleton called the site skeleton. You'll get the the examples right here. So what this does is this content is actually just Tumblr data. So I've created it on Tumblr and with Docpad I actually get, you know, I just installed the pages plugin and I get pages now as well. Um, I'm not the best person at styling things and, and this is more, so if anyone wants to style this, please go ahead and that'll be amazing. So we get to pull in um, Tumblr data directly into this. People love the Tumblr experience, they get to use Tumblr. And hopefully I'm wanting to get a, a medium.com um, one as well because I've recently moved to medium for my blogging. So that would be really cool. Now we also got this idea of custom interfaces. And custom interfaces is, well, what happens if we're a dev shop and we want to have a development experience that, or a content creation experience that we control, right? So if our client requests something, we should be able to add that feature right to the content creation experience and there's two plugins here there's Docpad collections editor and there's mini cms now mini cms includes some screenshots but they're, they're both pretty good and both should be checked out but i'll just show you so you you just have this general Docpad um creation experience uh or this general content creation experience you get to create your articles um you can edit some configuration and you get to see everything rendered so it is a good way um, to go about if you want to be able to kind of really have a coupled or tightly integrated experience with Docpad. Now we also have this new um, brand or this this new type of interface as well which is decoupled interfaces. So these are interfaces that are existing or third-party interfaces but you they interact directly with the Docpad database via an adapter. So you install an adapter in terms of a Docpad plugin. Now allow one of these decoupled interfaces to actually communicate directly to the Docpad database. Um, so the the we can use this as a guide for using Pros.io, which is a really cool markdown editor. I'm um, using it with Docpad. And we've also got this WebWrite inline GUI one which I'm really excited about and this is one that Docpad is or My Plan Digital is helping sponsor the development of and it's a big collaboration with them. So we have these are some screenshots and we have like our listing of all the documents in our website and we click one we get taken to this we get to edit the pages metadata and we get um, to edit it by content editable below. So we're making good progress in this and it's probably going to be out in the next few months and there's just a go file manager. Now what's really cool about this decoupled approach is by creating this inline GUI um, decoupled way, it can interact with Docpad via a plugin adapter, but it can also interact with any other static site trainer. So that's kind of how it came about. We were developing this just for Docpad initially and other static site trainers were like, hey, that looks like a really great GUI, I wish we could have that for our stack side trainer. So that's when we were like, oh, we might as well decouple it and then just provide adapters in the form of like a REST API spec or a socket spec um, to allow any backend to be able to utilize these things. So that's really cool in terms of the way we can think of it in terms of we can create GUIs or create content creation experiences 
that don't depend on the back end. So their clients, if they love inline GUI or they love whatever it is um, we help create, and this is where calling this the web right initiative. initiative. Um, so if they love that experience and then you decide Docpad isn't for you, you want to use Meteor.js or something crazy um, like that, then you can swap out Docpad, create an adapter, and then keep the, the client doesn't, no, there's even a difference on the back end. Everything still works really, really great. So that's going to be really cool. We're really excited about that. So we've got existing interfaces, um, for instance, importing data directly from Tumblr, custom interfaces, so documents collection editor, um, mini CMS, so plugins that work um, directly for Docpad and entirely integrated with Docpad. We've got these decoupled interfaces, so content creation experiences that will work with any backend, which is really cool. And what this allows is we always have, with Docpad, the best experience for everyone. People who love the Docpad development experience get to keep that, and they can always provide the best content creation experience for whoever it is. They can use Tumblr. If someone loves Tumblr, they can use the inline GUI, the web right inline GUI. They can use the custom interfaces like mini CMS or DC. We can always support the best experience for everyone, and that hasn't been able to be done before um, in a way that I think works so well that Docpad doesn't. Now, finally, we have great end user experience, um, at least on the roadmap. This is where we're really wanting to head. So I talked about this decoupled way and with the GUI, and what's really cool with that is um, eventually we could create a software as a service solution, so like a WordPress.com model, where you go to say webright.io, um, you create an account, you say, okay, I want to use this GUI and I want to use this backend. So let's use inline GUI with Docpad on the backend, create my website, $5 a month. Um, really, really cool. Or I can say, okay, I want to use this GUI with my own existing backend hosted somewhere else, right? And then we can, you know, maybe provide a free service there because their heavy lifting is done by their own service um, and it's really cool because we get to provide a really great solution without them having to install something or without them having to particularly um, care about all the nuances and so they can take the support directly to the service provider instead and they can provide just a really great streamlined um, end user experience. Now we also have this idea for apps. Now apps are um, for instance, like CodeKit. Um, so we could get CodeKit powered by Docpad or create a Mac app just for Docpad. Or we could create like a, a, an iPad app that hooks into the software as a service solution. And we, we've got a whole bunch of crazy ideas like this. So we've got this Git, um, GitHub repo called Docpad slash GUI. And on the issue track, we have all these different crazy ideas about what we're actually doing. And this is possible because we're an open ecosystem. We're trying to share as much. We're trying to develop as much as open source. So in closing, why is this just so cool? Um, pretty much, I, I love the idea of this open ecosystem. I love it how we're trying to share as much as possible. I love it how we're funded by donations to work on what we want, giving away everything for free to everybody who have access. Most of the world cannot even afford $5 a day, so why should we restrict them from creating awesome things, right? Instead, they should be able to use whatever it is, be able to get even better, help the community as well, and eventually um, the people who can pay can pay on what value they feel it is worth, and if they can't pay, then they can contribute time to solving you know, requests, so just doing what they find interesting and helping everybody raise up together. Now, it's also interesting in just how we can build this whole ground of um, decoupled experiences. We can provide the best developer experience. We can provide the best client experience no matter what because of this decoupled look on things. And it opens up a whole door of opportunities in terms of what's possible with end user experiences. So that's really exciting as well. Um, so I got that business interest partners joining for supportive ecosystem. And what's cool about right now is just how we've got businesses interested. Um, we got money flowing into the community, into the ecosystem, and we have partners, dev shops actually signing up to you know provide services for them and doing that. And in the meantime, 
you know, we can focus on trainings, training more people up to be great at Docpad, to help dev shops get on board and experience with Docpad and provide great client experiences. So it's really quite exciting there. It's it's just exciting all around, great decoupled experiences, always providing the best experience for everybody. Um, business interest coming in, we've got partners, dev shops joining up to attend to that interest. And we've just got this supportive ecosystem where everybody is allowed to get better and empowered to get better and empowered to help each other out. So I'm, I'll close it there. Um, if you have any questions, post them later on. And here's all the links. Um, if you want to hit any of us up after this, and by sh all means, get in contact, check Dogpad out, check WebRite out, check out any of this initiative, and, and please enjoy.